we'll talk about Dell in, in a little bit also. But then one sector that I have to wonder will lead the markets lower or higher we are the financials. They've just gotten hammered. They're technically now in a bear market, right? The XLF is down 20% for the year. Do you think that they're overdone? I was reading on Real Money Silver today that one of the uh, commentators there says, I think it's overdone. I think the bad news is way priced <laughs> into financials, and we could see a 10% rally. Do you agree? I think a 10% rally after the crushing that they've had could easily happen. It could uh -huh. happen quick. I don't know if it'll build. I don't know if it'll be sustained, but we don't have to know now. All we do is look at these lower pivot areas to see whether or not we can get a trade or resolution to the upside you know, for this type of rally. Because if we get resolution to the downside, once we look at these charts, it's going to be hard for the market to sustain you know, this lower range. So are you looking at the XLF for that, or are you going to the individual stocks to see if they're really predicting some direction? I look at the XLF as a whole, but I actually watch the leading stocks. You watch your Goldman, your, your Morgan, your all the other ones which we're going to get into. Yeah. But you know, I, I would rather you buy some of the better banks in the group than the entire ETF, because this ETF has been lagging the entire market. So let's go to Morgan Stanley, because it's been having some pretty wild swings for financials, right? Between 5 to 7 percent on any given day in any given direction. <laughs> so what is it telling you today, and what kind of direction can you glean? Well, a few things first. Some of the directors came out in Morgan above 20 and started buying shares. So insider buying, to me, I like it. I like to see uh, management on the side of the shareholders. Mm -hmm. There's been five of them, not just one of them. But the chart still hasn't been able to get out of their, its own way. And if you want to take their pain, it's in the 17s. They bought in the 20s. Take a look here, Morgan. You know, I did, you know, they came out with a good report. They tried to hold up before the market got pressured. This was your tight stop. And then it broke through support, broke through this 20, and now it's building a lower flag here. You know, if you wanted to be testing in a tier one, it's still a little bit risky. What I would wait is for it to start to resolve above 18, 18, 20 for that 10% move or so okay. back to at least 20, 21, and then you have to figure it out. But if we start to break below this area, we start going back below 1680, even this recent low of about 1640, you could see some resolution to the downside, and that would really spook the markets. All right, so Morgan Stanley not quite having a good direction yet, right? We're still in that, in well, that it's, testing it's, it's level. It's in that wedge, mm -hmm. okay? I think tier one, if you're a Morgan Stanley fan, fan, tier one, if you have to buy some banks. As a trade, I'm going to look to see if it could hold above that 1820 for a bounce back to 20 if this market does want to get to 1225 or so. And you also mentioned you're watching Goldman, so let's look at that chart to see if it's kind of saying the same thing. I think a lot of these are saying the same thing. And Goldman, also, if you look here, you have your lower wedge. Mm -hmm. You know, this was the last time we talked about it. We talked about can it stay above this recent downtrend? And you know what? It didn't. It broke it. Here was your tight stop. And then you had another lower support level, which it broke below with the market. And now it's trying to hold up. It's trying to create a lower pivot. For a trade, I think most traders are going to start buying this if it can get above 120 and stay for a move back to retest this broken support right around this 125. But just like Morgan, if you can't get out of this lower range and starts to break to the downside, this market is in trouble. Now I have three more I really want to hit on uh, quickly. And first is JP Morgan because arguably the best of the best. It's also pretty cheap comparatively to, to some of its peers. Uh, is that telling a different story? Is that holding up a lot better than Morgan and Goldman? Well, first of all, Jamie Dimon should run for president. That's my belief. But anyway, I, I, I've always tried to buy J.P. Morgan. I turn to it as the class of the group. It hasn't been out of performing because they've all been under pressure. Yeah. But if you need to buy one, I trust him. I like J.P. Morgan as far as you know, a potential stock. I do all my banking there. This, too, you know, has a, a bit of a range here. Look, you have uh, an upper level and a lower level. If you want to be long J.P. Morgan, try being long versus this uh, 3577. If it starts to clear this area, you could get a move to retest you know, this uh, 39 area, but as you can see, there's a boatload of resistance in all these things. It's mm -hmm. below all the moving averages. These banks have a lot of work to do, so for a, a trade actively above 37, could get you back to 39, and then that's a boatload of resistance. All right, let's go to Bank of America because I know it's been one of the hated banks of like all time <laughs> this year, right? It's down over 44%, but I do have to say it's cheap. And also, it seems like we're trying. They're trying to get their house in order, right? They're they're, they're going to sell their Mer Merrill real estate portfolio to Blackstone. They're in talks. They're also trying to settle a federal and state probe over uh, foreclosure practices. I mean, this is like getting some clarity. I wonder at any point does it make a good long-term buy? But you got to just wait two <laughs> years. Well, I talk a lot of people at Bank of America. A lot of guys that came from Merrill, and they're all working hard. And they say the business is decent, and they all have options a hell of a lot higher. So when the CEO mm -hmm. said his whole net worth is is in the stock that they're all on the team. I believe them because you know I'm on the ground and I and I talk to the foot soldiers. But there's a lot of problems in there. A lot of problems from countrywide. A lot of bad mortgages. They have a lot to unwind. Absolutely. But with, with risk comes reward. This is like the fire bed where if we're going to go 
much lower, that means Bank of America is going to break five bucks. But if we hit a short-term low and these banks get better, rally, it's going to you know, probably pop pretty hard, right? Yeah, you could do the same thing here. Nice lower range. You know, you could micromanage this thing. If it starts getting above this little downtrend or this little lower pivot above 784, you could fill this gap, and then this too could test where it broke down from around nine bucks, and that's a decent percentage. But if it starts to resolve to the downside, you better run for the hills because this has been the problem spot. All right, real quick as we wrap up the segment, if you were to pick one stock that you would watch to see what it, it would lead the group, would it be Bank of America? Well, Bank of America is where the fear is. Mm -hmm. You know, Bank of America starts breaking below this lower pivot. You know, the media is going to be all over it, and the public who's been trying to say, if you want to buy America, buy Bank of America, they're going to be in pain, and that's going to be a barometer, and that's going to be where the psychology is. It's not that important, but it's important for psychology. Right, right. I would say, you know, the group as a whole, I would, if you have to be long two of them, you know, I've said, you know, Morgan over Goldman lately, and I'd, I'd rather you be in J.P. Morgan over Bank of America. We'll watch Bank of America for the fear. Good stuff. Yes. Okay, we'll be back with some quick ways to make some cash right after this.